Greetings and welcome. This is Rajiv Makni on the Gadget 360 show. And once again, this is chock-a-block stuff, right? Our top story today, the Apple HomePod 2. No mini shini. This is the HomePod 2, the second generation. Any major difference from the original two new sensors, seamless connection with Apple devices? But eventually it comes down to this. Is this better than the rest out there? Do you listen to Apple music a lot? And what does it bring to you different from the competition? Then our next review is the Fast Track Reflex Beat Plus, compact and comfortable smartwatch, ultra view display, health monitoring capabilities, good price point also. We'll show you a full review. Then our first look at the Asus Swift X14. They sent us a demo model. This is not something that has come out right now. It's made specifically for designers and creators, next generation CPU and GPU. What's so different about the X14? And then I'll tell you something very interesting that we've done. I have the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro and the Galaxy 4 Classic, right? So both great watches and we were doing a little bit of a story on the 5 Pro and I noticed some very interesting differences and one of them is huge. I'm going to tell you that on the show. Let's get started with today's show. OnePlus finally previewed their debut tablet, the all-new OnePlus Pad, at their major event this week. It is a sleek and slim tab feather-like, weighing only 552 grams. This flagship pad is already gaining traction for its battery life, which is an impressive one month on standby mode. It has a powerful hardware for multitasking along with some cutting-edge cooling technology. Keep an eye open for a detailed review on it in the near future. Garmin also announced a flagship product in the global market, their Vivo Move Trend Watch. This hybrid smartwatch is the perfect combination of fashion and function. With its traditional analog look paired with the essential smart features, it offers many health and fitness related features. But the best part of this watch is that it is Garmin's first watch with wireless charging. We're looking forward to experiencing this firsthand very soon. Our top story today is the Apple HomePod Two. Yes, it's here. It's taken a long time. The first one was not a very successful product. Now, with two new sensors to measure temperature and humidity, 360 spatial sound, quality audio automation through the HomeKit accessory, increased security, and a price of 32,900 rupees. It is one of the most expensive speakers, smart speakers you can buy. But why would you buy it? Is it good enough? Is the audio actually better? How is the sound? Do you listen to Apple Music a lot? All of that answered in our review. After the initial failure of the debut HomePod in 2018, Apple has returned with its next generation smart speaker, the Apple HomePod 2. Can it gain more traction than its predecessor? Is it a better option than the HomePod mini? Is it worth its cost? There are so many questions, so let's dive in and find out. Physically speaking, it resembles its predecessor. They are similar in size and weight and are surrounded by an elegant looking mesh. There are a few differences like the dial on the top is bigger. It is slightly shorter and Apple listened to all the complaints and finally provided a power cable that is detachable. It is now easy to hide the ugly white wire. Internally, the HomePod now has only 5 tweeters instead of 7, which is the main reason why it is shorter and slightly cheaper. We were impressed with how little this change affected the audio quality. It comes with four built-in mics, which is less than before, but enough to catch your voice from a distance. Hey Shri, what's the likelihood of rain today? It doesn't look like it's going to rain today. Similar to the older model, the HomePod is Siri-enabled. You can use Siri to play any song that you want to listen to via Apple Music or ask it any questions. So let's test it out. Hey Siri, what's the temperature? It's about 27 degrees outside. Hey Siri, what's the humidity like? The humidity is currently 35%. Hey Siri, tell me the top 5 headlines for today. Here's the latest news. As Turkey and Syria's death toll rises to 15,000, India sets up a field hospital in Turkey's province for quake relief. Meanwhile, Turkey's president admits shortcomings. Hey Siri, stop. It says it is not the HomePod seamlessly connects to Apple devices. All you have to do is go to the Home app, click on Add Accessories and put your phone close to the HomePod. It will automatically recognize and initiate the setup process. 
the Apple ecosystem also offers HomeKit-enabled accessories to create a smart home hub to control lights, blinds, and essentially automate your entire house. Another aspect of this seamless connection is that now you can pair multiple HomePods to create a truly immersive experience and send messages across different parts of your home. We cannot talk speakers without talking about the audio quality. So how good does the HomePod sound? The quality is where Apple differs from its competitors. It may not provide as much AI as Alexa or Google Assistant, but the sound quality is unmatched, even at low or extreme volumes. The audio is not jarring or partly missing. So getting back to our initial questions, it's hard to know if this next generation HomePod will surpass its predecessor and succeed. So it has a lot more to offer in terms of the AI. In comparison to the HomePod Mini, it is bigger and heavier and is still very pricey, selling at the cost of Rs 32,900, which was the initial problem too. The Apple ecosystem has expanded a lot since the debut launch of the HomePod, providing a bigger platform for it to succeed this time around. Since it's a smart speaker, the AI factor is important and there are a lot of other better alternatives for that. But if you are looking to keep in the Apple family and with solid audio quality, the HomePod 2 is a great option. And from the world of smart speakers, let's move on now to smart watches. And you know what I say, if it's early morning, 10 a.m., then at least five new smart watches and five new TWS buds have been released today. One of them is the Fast Track Reflex Beat Plus, 1.6 inch ultra view display, 60 hertz refresh rate on that, which for a watch is great. 500 nits of brightness again for a watch is fantastic. Water and scratch resistant heart rate and blood oxygen monitors, up to seven days of battery life, 60 sports mode. But it's the price point that really is very, very amazing. Amazing for what it offers at 1499 rupees that's under 1500 rupees but that itself is also the big question there is competition at this price point also let's take a look if this is good enough at in our review there is no shortage of smart watches in today's day and age with such competition we are curious to see if the newly arrived fast track reflex beat plus has something to offer to help it stand out let's review it and find out Physically speaking, the Reflex Beat Plus comes in the invisible black color with a simple design that is comfortable to wear. It has a thin and compact dial which is light in weight with a soft strap that is easy on the hand. The dial has a 6.1 inch ultra view display that claims to be water, dust and scratch resistant. So far it has been true for us, neither of the three have affected the screen yet. You just have to twist your hand to get the dial on the top and voila, the screen comes on. The Reflex Beat Plus offers up to 500 nits of brightness and this can be tweaked on the watch as per your need. Moving to the digital capabilities, the watch has quite a few smart features to offer. It comes with heart rate, blood oxygen and sleep monitors to help you track your health. You can set goals for yourself in each of the categories and the watch will reflect on your outcome. The result displayed is detailed like whether your sleep was light or heavy and how many times you woke up. It gathers all this data through a sensor, conveniently located at the back of the watch. Adding to the health benefits, the watch has 60 sports modes that help trace your exercise patterns. It can measure the time, reps and quality of the exercises to help you track and improve your record, innately revamping your health. This fast track watch also allows women to track their period and monitor the consistency of their menstrual cycle. The Reflex Beat Plus has a battery life of up to 7 days which is very handy if you're traveling and forget your charger. Speaking of the charger, it is a dual pin magnetic one that easily latches on. The only issue we found here was that you can't see the remaining battery anywhere on the watch. The only time it appears on the screen is when you plug it in. The best part is that you can get all this at the mere cost of Rs 1499. If you're looking for a cheaper smartwatch, put this at the top of your list because it has premium features that no other watch in this price range can offer. But if you're looking for a watch that has only premium features, regardless of the cost, then there are other alternatives. 
And we have a special preview for you. This is a product that is not out right now. It will be out very soon, specially made for creators and people that really, really want to consume and create their content. The Acer Swift X14. Not out as yet. It has a beautiful 2.8K 120Hz OLED screen. It has a 13th generation Intel Core processor, very low latency, big battery, large fan on it, a nice QHD camera. All of it is looking really, really good. But remember, this is a demo model. This is what we thought when we tried it out. The Acer Swift X14 is an interesting piece of hardware coming out of the company with its target audience, according to Acer itself, being design students, creators, and younger millennials. This is primarily because the laptop is great for editing and watching videos and can even be used to game, but probably not on ultra settings. Powered by the 13th Gen Intel Core i7-8 series processor, the computer is ideal for those who spend hours editing videos on Premiere Pro or touching up pictures in Lightroom. Housing the powerful NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4050 graphics, which contain inbuilt studio drivers, these are primarily built for creators so that they can deliver fast and fluid performance. The stunning 2.8K OLED display with an ocean glass touchpad makes this the perfect device to unleash your creativity. The display offers extremely vivid color with even the blacks being extremely deep, providing depth and overall good contrast. The 16x10 display also makes the color grading and image quality pop, thereby helping all kinds of creators. We tested out the laptop and played the Game of the Year for 2022 Elden Ring on it and found the performance to be quite satisfactory. Overall, the device has been updated with a larger fan due to the redesigned thermal layout, which allows you to game for longer. After a few hours of playing Elden Ring, however, the device did heat up. But this is to be expected as the device is more geared towards creative professionals rather than individuals looking for a powerful gaming setup. The one positive about gaming on this laptop, however, is that the screen displays some gorgeous visuals. Elden Ring is an extremely good looking game, but on the Swift X14, the scenery and skyboxes look absolutely gorgeous. The system comes pre-installed with Windows 11, and it weighs around 1.6 kgs, which isn't too bad if you're someone who's planning to carry this laptop everywhere you go. The two built-in front-facing stereo speakers are satisfactory, but the sound coming off it can sometimes feel a little bit shrill. There is still a whole lot more Acer has to reveal about the Swift X14, and we definitely can recommend this piece of hardware to creators who are in need of a sleek but powerful machine. Let's take a quick break right now and we come back. Lots more happening on the Gadget 360 show. Now for a story that I thought, you know, we would be bringing just the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro Samsung, our long-term review. But we realized something while we were doing that story, something came up that I thought was very, very important. So the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, beautiful watch, absolutely fantastic. And we were doing a comparison with the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic, right? So big differences between the two, including, of course, the fact that this has that bezel that moves, which I absolutely love, great to control it. The 5 doesn't have it. But this is now we're not going to be a regular run-of-the-mill smartwatch review. Both the watches with me are very, very special, like I said. And like I said, the Galaxy Watch Pro, Pro Classic from 2021, we gave it very, very good reviews. Called it one of the best Android watches ever. And the 5 Pro now in 2022 is also absolutely fantastic. But you know, I'll tell you something really, really strange. For the first time ever, I liked the previous version. And I'll tell you why. Of course, in the 5, when we do the full review of the 5, we'll come up with all of that. But I'll tell you the one thing that really made it much, much worse. The older one doesn't have as good a battery life. It's slower in performance, has fewer sensors. But why do I still prefer it? Because at the end of the day, what do you look at when you're looking at a watch? The display, right? The screen, right? The Watch 4 Classic has Corning Gorilla Glass and this one, like I said, has 
Sapphire. And I thought that would be as good or better because this is the next version. Wasn't like that, in fact, in terms of the legibility, taking it out in the sunlight, the screen, the look, the brightness. Everything on the Samsung Watch 5 Pro screen was not good at all. There are times when I could not see the screen. So I tried to find out and the main reason is, once again, I'm telling you the Corning Gorilla Glass DX that they put on the 4 is the big game changer. It really, really doesn't reflect light back at you and really makes the screen and the display absolutely fantastic. In fact, it enhances the display readability by 75%. You can actually see the difference right now and I was able to see it. We are capturing this on a camera. I imagine what I was seeing with the human eye. So Samsung, while I do the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro full review very soon, this is something I just wanted to reach out to you. When you're coming up with the next version of the watch, especially the 6, make sure you go back to Corning Gorilla Glass DX. It is a completely different beast. We reviewed the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro just a few months ago here on the Gadgets 360 show. But after using it for a while, there's a major issue that we noticed with this watch. In order to help you understand the issue, we're going to compare the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro with one of its predecessors, the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic. It is no news that both watches are undoubtedly top-tier watches, not only in Samsung's lineup, but also in comparison to others. Samsung watches are great for everyday use. Both watches have excellent design quality, high battery lives, and come with a plethora of digital features. The Galaxy Watch 4 Classic is more of a premium looking watch with its rotating bezel, while the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro is more sporty in style and nature. Getting to the problematic bit, the biggest disappointment with the watch is its screen. There's a world of difference between the two Samsung watches when it comes to the display. The Galaxy 4 Classic has a screen made of Corning Gorilla Glass with DX, which gives it a classy look, anti-reflective surface with great clarity. The Samsung Galaxy 5 Pro, on the other hand, has a Sapphire Glass AMOLED display, which is not as good as the Corning Gorilla Glass. As a result, the screen for the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro has lower clarity, less opacity, and insipid color representations in comparison to the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic. The difference is especially noticeable directly under the sun, even after aligning them with the exact same settings. This change has made it really hard to see the watch on the go, especially the smaller details. So we asked Samsung why a more advanced model of its flagship smartwatch category, which was launched a year after its precursor, lost its screen quality. This flawed screen can't be a result of a price issue because the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro is a highly expensive watch that is part of the premium watch category. What do you think? Did you notice this issue too? Well, that then is the Gadget 360 show for this week. As always, a great amount of fantastic stuff coming up next week. I'll see you on that show.